In this video, we'll discuss what are called coterminal angles. Uh, if two angles in standard position have the same terminal side, they are coterminal angles. Coterminal angles. Okay, so what this means, um, if you don't catch it from that definition, is take a look at these two angles that we have here. Um, I have the angle 140 that starts in standard position. I also have, if I do a different color here, negative 220, and it's negative because it's going clockwise. Those two are coterminal angles because they land on the same terminal side. What this is going to do for us is this is going to allow us to use uh, big angles um, and figure figure things out from big angles using its coterminal angle that would be smaller. For so like in for this case, um, whatever we may be doing with these angles, and I'm not going to get into depth too much depth for that, but. If they gave me negative 220, instead, I could think of the angle 140, and it would be the same. I could also, let me draw another axis, uh, axis here, coordinate plane. Okay. I could also do this. I could go all the way around and then land there. And what that would be, that would be 140 degrees, but I went all the way around, so I would add 360 to it. So this angle actually is 500 degrees. Right. And then I could if I wanted to get another coterminal, I could just say, hey, I want to go all the way around again. And I know that those are going to be the same. This is going to be a coterminal angle with 860 degrees. I just added another 360. So just adding them in. I could also minus if I gave you an angle that was like a thousand twenty three degrees and I wanted to figure out its coterminal angle. I could minus 360 until I get down to something that is maybe between zero and 360, or maybe I want it to be in up here, you know, I could, so I could subtract it until I got between zero and 180, if that's possible. Um, so adding uh, 360 will give me a new coterminal angle, because if I add 360 degrees, I'm still facing the same direction after I make my rotation. So I'll read this uh, paragraph. Any angle has an uh, infinite many coterminal angles, I could just keep adding 360. Uh, to that angle or subtract 360 from it, the resulting value has a terminal side in the same location. And then they give an example there. So for example, 10460 are a coterminal, as is negative 260. They minus 360 from 100. So we add or subtract full rotations out. So keep that in mind um, that we're adding and subtracting full rotations to land on the so same terminal. Um, and again, they have infinitely many coterminal angles. Um, and this will explain, they, they put it here, the repetitive shape in the graphs of the trigonometric functions. You have no idea what that means yet, um, but you will um, in, into the next chapter. Um, but the reason um, that things are going to be start being repetitive, and we'll see this, is because when I rotate, I hit that same, like if I just start spinning, I'm going to hit the same direction over and over. Okay, so an angle's reference an angle's reference angle, okay, it's weird, but that's correct. Angle's reference angle is the measure of the smallest... positive acute angle T formed by the terminal side of the angle T and the horizontal. I'll show you what that means uh, with the pictures right here below. All right, so how we find a reference angle. So the first one, let's focus on just the quadrant one. Um, this angle, they say it's okay, it's here in quadrant one. Well, if it's the smallest positive acute angle, well, that's just the exact same angle. So anything in quadrant one, its reference angle, right, is the same angle. Now, quadrant two, let's take a look at that. So I'm starting here with this angle, and its reference angle is this angle right here. It's made with the horizontal, um, and it's the smallest positive acute angle formed. So notice that the, the pink one goes, and it's like a, an obtuse angle bigger than 90 degrees. The blue one is acute, less than 90 degrees. Here is the reason why that we're going to do this, because they, they like explain, they show this definition, and there is reasoning for it, um, but they don't really explain it. The reason being is because eventually what we're going to do is take these rotations, and we're going to draw a triangle, a right triangle from it. Well, the pink angle, actually, I can't, if I use that as an angle of my, um, for my triangle, there is no, like, I would have to do something like this. And sorry, that's not good, but um, angle, some kind of triangle like that. There we go. It fixed itself. But that's still, that's an obtuse triangle. We like right triangles, and we're going to figure out why we like right triangles here in the next couple sections. But that's the reasoning just to give you um, 
some insight of like, well, why does this matter? Well, we want to draw a triangle. So look at quadrant three. That angle is bigger than 180 degrees. So we're talking about this angle here, right? And the coterminal angle, is, or sorry, the reference angle is going to be right here. It's like the horizontal axis. I created that angle. And the reason being, again, is because I can draw a right triangle here, which we eventually will do. So, and then the quadrant four, and we'll talk about formulas here in a moment. Quadrant four, this, this being uh, an angle that goes into the fourth quadrant like this. So it's bigger than 270, less than 360. Its reference angle is going to be, again, from the horizontal axis, so we can create a triangle. Now, how do we come up with these angles? Well, quadrant one's easy. It's the same. But if we look here, I'm going to try to explain the reasoning here. This angle and this angle... Both of them, the pink one and the blue one, both add to 180, right? Because they make up this like line here. So they make up that 180 degree angle. So if I have a, the pink angle, I just take 180 and I minus that T from it. And that's going to give me the T prime, which is their definition right here. Now, this may not make sense yet. Let's ignore this first line. This will make sense a little later. But this 180 minus T is what the, for, the formula that you're actually going to use right now for this section because this section is going to be focused on degrees. Uh, well, this video, we're about to explain this. Uh, the next angle, type of angle will be in the next video. All right, quadrant three. Um, think about this. Okay, well, this, if I stop the angle right there, this angle right here is just 180, right? And going from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis. So that's 180. So the blue one is just going to be the big pink angle, right? Because the pink angle is bigger than 180. But if I subtract the 180 from it, then I'm left with this pink one right there. And that's the same as the blue one. So this one is going to be take your angle, the big angle, and minus 180, and it's going to give you a small one. Um, I don't memorize these formulas. I just draw a picture and then ask my, I make sense out of it. Like I'm like, okay, that has to be 180. I'm going to add more and that kind of thing. Okay, the same thing here. Um, if the pink uh, angle and the blue angle make up the whole circle, like those angles make up a whole revolution, so they add their 360. So I would just take 360 and minus the angle that they gave me, and that would give me the T prime. That would give me the reference angle. Again, I don't memorize formulas because you know, you, a lot of you guys are STEM majors, and you're going to be doing this for a while. Um, this kind of thing you're going to do again in Calc 3. Um, the, the likeliness of you, rem you memorizing this stuff and being able to just like pull it out of nowhere, um, is very slim. Some of you guys, I'm not going to say you can't cause a lot of you guys, some of you guys have great memory. I do not. Um, so what I like to do is just draw pictures and then do what we just did. Like, Hey, the blue and the pink add to 180 or the pink is a little past 180, that kind of thing. And I just use that kind of reasoning. If you are a step person, here is a how to right there. So if you would like to use the how-to, please do. Um, so let's do a few examples to make sure that you, you grasp it. Find an angle uh, alpha that is a coterminal with an angle measuring 870. So it says coterminal, not reference. So be careful with that. We're not trying to find a reference angle. We're just finding a coterminal. So I'm going to take 870 degrees, and I'm going to minus 360s until I get in between 0 and 360. So I'm going to minus 360 degrees. Uh, what's that going to be? That is 510 degrees. Well, that's still not between 0 and 360. So I'm going to take 510 degrees and I'm going to minus another 360. All right. That's going to be 140. That's going to be 150 degrees. So the coterminal angle for 870 is 150 degrees. They would land at exactly the same co uh, same terminal ray. So it would end at the exact same thing. All right. That's how you deal with it when the angle is very big. Now, if the angle is very small, meaning negative, so find an angle beta that is a coterminal uh, that is coterminal with an angle measuring negative 300. So, and we want it to end up here between zero and 360. So I'm going to take negative 300, and I'm just going to add 360 to it because that's a full revolution, leaving me with 60 degrees. So the answer here is 60 degrees. 60 degrees and negative 300 would land at the exact same place.